because something's working doesn't mean it's built the right way. Hi, I'm Ryan Mocky, and today we're talking about how to develop with best practices. Best practices are a complex topic, so with so much to cover, here are my top tips for a good build. Number one, a good, well thought out folder structure is the best way to ensure nothing in your app is lost or forgotten about. In general, you should divide your folders into two separate categories. Process related folders, think about workflows and wizards. Here you can see how our group flows together into a folder called process orders, where all calculations and actions for handling orders should go. These are process related. Entity related folders, overview pages for maintenance, validation flows or event microflows should go in here. Next, I group my overview pages as well as any get or set flows under one folder called orders. This is an example of entity related folder structure. When creating a subflow, consider if any data can be passed as a parameter instead of performing a retrieve action for it. Here, you can see me make the mistake of retrieving an object from the database before realizing it is available in the parent flow. So I remove the database retrieve and pass it as a parameter instead. It's always best to avoid committing data until as late as possible in your logic. This is because once an object is committed, it locks that object or list until the database interaction is complete. If another commit is done on the same objects, the app will have to wait until it's completed before it can perform the second commit action. Whenever fetching data, try to use retrieve by association wherever possible. This uses cache data, which is more readable, as well as uses an index. In addition, instead of performing complex retrieve actions, it is better to use list operations to filter and aggregate the required data. This is because the platform optimizes these operations and performs them at the same time. Calculated attributes can be a useful tool, but you should be extremely cautious about using them in your app. This is because the microflow will be called whenever that entity or object is displayed in the UI or accessed in a different flow. Meaning, when dealing with lists of data, a microflow could potentially be called hundreds or thousands of times depending on the size of your dataset. As you can imagine, this can easily consume all of your app's memory and cause it to slow down. While there are many more best practices to apply, these are the ones which I have noticed make the biggest difference in my projects. There are, however, many more things to learn and consider. So I encourage you to read the written blog which accompanies this video or simply search best practices on docs.mendix.com. That's all for now. Until next time, goodbye.